Hello, welcome to The Orchard. We're looking at water and water supply. It's becoming clear to everybody that globally water is going to be a big issue. And what we've done here is consider that from the outset. There is no irrigation system here. And you'd imagine that that would be an impossible idea to grow fruit in an open field with no irrigation, relying solely on rainfall and occasional top-ups. Well, that's precisely what we've been doing here for five years. And if you look behind me, you can see there are nettles, there are docks, there's a lot of long grass. And that conserves water really by preventing the sun drying the soil out as it would do if the soil was bare. But also it provides a fantastic environment for bacteria and fungi which distribute the water to the trees and also store the water. And the organic material with the fungi and the bacteria are really helping these trees survive on optimal amounts of water. And that's the key thing here. This is not struggling. These trees are not struggling for water. They're being provided with adequate amounts. Um, and that saves a huge amount of money. This is an amazing tree. This is white Spanish runette. It was grown throughout Europe through the 19th century and earlier and in America. And it's a good example of why it's so important to conserve varieties for this new environment of climate change. This tree was almost extinct. It was saved by Burnwood Nurseries and we're very pleased to see it growing so well here. It does so well in dry soil. So we're just walking through this orchard, um, looking really at how things are working. We're coming up to Aylesbury Prune um, on its good strong roots, it's producing a crop. It's got plenty of nice uh, new leaves. You can see the rock dust and the seaweeds working well. And this tree now, it's five years old and it's beginning its working life. It's starting to produce fruit and we've not watered that tree for over a year at all. Studley salamander, which was saved from an old um, garden, and it's doing very well, but you can see it's much younger. The important thing is it's put lots of new extension growth on, and I'm always looking really for 30 centimetres of extension growth every year. The paleness is normal on a young tree, and it will gradually darken up during the season, particularly after its, um, its third feed with seaweed. Another Aylesbury prune, equally doing well, um, plenty of crop forming in that. And then we've got lots of trees as we walk through which are responding to the treatment. But occasionally you'll see there are pockets of powdery mildew or some attempt at uh, disease. But because the trees are running very efficiently, they're able to fight that off. We never spray for that. And very quickly, the trees overcome these weaknesses using their plant secondary metabolites. This particular tree struggled last year um, and I think that was mainly due to a deficiency. That's now been corrected. And the way that I can tell that is I've got this very promising coloration on the leaves. These secondary pigments that give a kind of pink tinge to the brand new growth. And you can see that very clearly all the way down. These feathers that form lower down, I leave on as much as possible on, on a young tree because they're all able to supply sugar. So this tree is now recovering. It hasn't cropped, but I'm expecting it to put on quite a lot of new branches in the next few months um, because it will keep growing really until the end of August. This is Thorpe's peach which is doing very well at the moment. It's putting on a lot of growth. But it's not only looking at the trees that's important, it's also looking at the herbage that we've got here. Water supply is helped by having these plants um, and an indicator that the soil is well watered is this meadow buttercup. That shows that we've got plenty of water deep down these are starting to spread in this area um, and we've also got docks which again will show you there is some moisture there. They bring up a lot of nutrients because what you want in this kind of orchard is a balance between plants which bring up nutrients and plants which store nutrients and the grass is really the store of the nutrient and the dock is really the what I call an accumulator, what they're known as accumulators. So there's a lot happening here at the moment, um, which is very, very pleasing. Last year we got an extremely cold spring and Robin, which is an ancient pear, got hit and it damaged the tops a little bit, but they're now growing out. And I know that that's um, happening because I can see the new growth, which is here. So in the next few months, that will double in size uh, until it forms a proper crown. And the, the real promising sign is the nice large leaves down there. So all of this is a good sign and none of these trees are being watered. Over here, I did put some new trees in. I put a lot of trees in the, um, uh, the, the end of winter. This is green pippin. Look at that color. There's been a bit of nibbling, a weevil had a go, and then it's gone. 
it didn't like the taste. And that coloration tells you everything. That's a very good sign on a brand new tree. So I probably will be watering these trees um, perhaps in a week or two if there's no rain, just because they're so new. But to be honest, at the moment, they're looking, they're looking pretty good. So water's gonna be a big problem. Um, so I think really regenerative farming is gonna be the only way forward.